there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I've got a really fun idea for you that's gonna save you some money. Well, I guess it only saves you money if you're gonna go buy the expensive thing that I'm gonna show you how to duplicate. So here you can see some pretty designs that I have done with my old, old Cricut machine. See, I get this pretty kind of foil look here. And I was inspired because I had seen the new foil quill advertised, which is a heat up pen that you plug into the wall and then you hook into your die cutting machine and it allows you to foil pretty designs that you've made, um, you know, with your die cutting machine, your software and die cutting machine, so you could foil it on cardstock. And I thought, boy, that's neat, but oh, that's a lot of money to spend because it's like a hundred bucks. So I'm going to show you how you can do it with a very inexpensive product. I'm using scratch paper, um, the kind that has the foil underneath. Now there's scratch paper with with holograph, um, rainbow, all sorts of different versions, but I'm gonna use the foil today because I think it's gonna make a little bit more impact and duplicate the foil quill a lot better. So what you wanna do is just take your scratch board and adhere it to your mat. Um, I'm using a Cricut machine, but the Eclipse mats work in it and they were cheaper, so that's what I'm using today. And I'm gonna tip the camera down to my machine so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so here you have your blade holder. So the easiest way to do this technique is just to take out your blade holder and take your blade, which I already had an upside down, but there's your little Cricut blade, right? You wanna put it in upside down so the blade is inward. Now you can use an old dull blade for this if you're afraid of dulling your, uh, your good blade. And I have it set on this old Cricut expression, I have it set to five. So this would be like the thickness I would use to cut a, um, like a cereal box, I would say. And my pressure, I'm not sure what my pressure is. I'm just gonna click it. I think my pressure is, my pressure is at max. And the speed doesn't matter because my, um, my computer is gonna control that. So my blade is in upside down. Now I am going to load my paper. And I'm gonna move the camera over so you can see my computer screen. Okay, so I am using a product called Scal2, which was a software that used to work with the, Cric the old Cricut machines. And you can use whatever software you currently use with your die cutter. And I just made a little design here. I'll click preview so you can see what it, what it looks like. Um, I took a flourish and then I, f I copied and pasted it and flipped it so I'd have a mirror. And then I just put a circle in there because I thought it would be a nice area to do some stamping. So I'm gonna go ahead and click cut and hit okay. You know, your software might be a little bit different and that's gonna tell the machine to cut. And here I'll just show you again what I was able to cut. Now this here is the one done with the blade upside down on the same paper I am recording right now. Hopefully that's in frame. And this one I did a little differently. You can see the line's a little thicker. Well, what I did was I took this, uh, the, one of the, um, little sticks that comes in the kit of scratch art. It's, it came with four sticks and you can see there's two different ends. There's a, like a chisel end and there's a, a pointy end and I cut this in half and I took the pointy end and I cut a strip of shelf liner paper. This is the stuff you'd use to, you know, put in your drawers so that your dishes didn't get chipped or things didn't move around. I cut a strip of that. I wrapped it around the piece I cut and I just, um, I taped it down with some duct tape. So this gives it a little bit of squish so I didn't have to be absolutely perfect and the blade holder can hold that. And when we're done, after that's done cutting, I'll show you how you put this into your machine so you can calibrate it. Okay, the machine is done, so I'm gonna unload the paper. And this was a kind of silver holograph paper. And let's see, can you see how beautifully it did? It cut everything perfectly. Now, the one thing you wanna be careful of is when you're handling the paper that you don't scrape it with your fingernails or anything like that before you go to use it, um, because it will scratch it. I think if you use this on a card and you mail it off, it should be just fine. Um, you know, of course, somebody could go and run their fingers on it and scratch it, which wouldn't happen with a foil design, but, um, but you know, I think to get this look for pennies on the dollar, I think it's a great idea. So I wanted to show you how you would use your um, homemade one, your homemade scraper if you wanted a wider line. And so what you'd wanna do here is take some playing cards or something that you can use as a shim, and you wanna do this while you still have your blade in there, and you wanna see what distance from the ground it is, or from the bottom of your machine. So you're just basically shimming here because you want to make sure you have your um, 
you want to make sure that you have the tool that you've made in at the right depth. So I'm just using these old playing cards, these old sorry cards, to figure that out. Okay, that's how that's how deep you want it. So I'd leave those cards there and I'd remove my blade. And then I'd put my homemade tool right in here. And I would just make sure the tip is resting on those cards. And I think I would wrap my shelf liner actually a little bit tighter next time because it does have a little bit too much give. It still works. But I just want to make sure that I've got that in there enough that it's touching those cards. But you don't want it all the way down to the bottom. If you didn't have those cards in, you know, this thing would just drag across the bottom. And then when you go to cut with this, the same way you did with your upside down blade, it's going to cut perfectly. And instead of having a, a, a skinny design, you're going to have that wider design. And of course, you could sharpen that to a point or you could have it a little blunter, depending on how wide of a line you want. So you can get a really elegant fine line or you can get a thicker line. So I hope you found this helpful. It's so quick and easy to do this. Um, I can't see how it could harm your machine, but um, like I mentioned, my Cricut is probably over 10 years old. It's uh, totally out of warranty, <laughs> so I'm not really too worried about it myself, um, but just kind of keep that in mind. It would work the same, I think, no matter what die cutter you have. Just, you know, use your own judgment, you know, and I accept no responsibility for anything that happens to your machines, but um, with my old Cricut, it worked really well. The only other thing, you want to kind of keep in mind is that with the scratch paper um, the reason you're getting this design is because some of this top black material has been removed so that is probably going to end up stuck on your mat or it could be the dust could be inside your machine so when you're done doing this project I would just take a um, like a microfiber cloth or something something lint free and I would just go and wipe everything down and make sure that you're not leaving anything behind but like I said I'm using a very old machine um, I do love this machine it's a workhorse so obviously I don't want anything bad to happen to it but um, it worked really well for me and I think it could save you some money and um, give you some really fun, trendy looks without spending a hundred bucks. Please give me a thumbs up if you like these types of videos, because I like to make them. I like to share the ideas that I come up with, and I hope it helps you in your crafting endeavors. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.